Hi, curl friends, Naturally Rhonda here. All of my old time subbies, I love you, love you, love you. Thank you so, so much for coming back every week to watch my videos. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, stay a while, check out some of my other content. Today's video is all about various natural hair terminology. I got the idea for this video one day, I was having a conversation with my mom and she was confused on a few of the different terms. So I figured, you know what? If my mom is confused on this, that means that there are other people confused on this too. And quite frankly, I didn't always know everything that I know. So I'm sharing the knowledge. Okay, so this video might be a little long. I have my notes because anyone who knows me knows that I am a talker. I love to ramble on and I could go on and on for hours about anything that I'm passionate about. So I'm gonna stick to my script. <laughs> but like I said, this is gonna be a chatty video, so it is gonna be a little longer. So take this time now to grab a snack, cup of coffee, glass of wine, I have mine, hey, or whatever you like. Also, I filmed a video on these mini twists that I will leave down below in the description box as well as up above in the cards if you are interested in checking that one out. All right, let me just start with this disclaimer. Before anyone gets in the comments or my messages saying, but that's not the way I do things. You don't know what you're talking about. Who are you to say that this is what it is? Blah, 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 blah. Disclaimer, these are just my opinions based on research that I have done and based on my personal hair journey. There are tons of things that I did not include in this list. I'm in no way saying that this is the end all be all of natural hair terminology, whatever, not at all. Okay, enough rambling, time to get into the video. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is pre-poos. Pre-poos are typically oils or and or conditioners that are put into your hair before you even shampoo. You can sleep in this or this can just be done right before you shampoo. Some people detangle with their pre-poo. It's just a way to pre-treat your hair before you go in with the shampoo. That moves us right along to shampoos. Now, not all shampoos are created equal. Some shampoos are for clarifying your hair. Those are the deep cleansing, those are my favorite, but some people don't really care for those shampoos because they can strip your hair of its natural oils, which leads me to moisturizing shampoos. Moisturizing shampoos will clean your hair, but they're not as deep of a clean. Co-washes. Now, a co-wash or to co-wash your hair basically means that you are using a cleansing conditioner. No shampoo, but you are cleansing your hair with a conditioner. Some believe that this is healthier for your hair because co-washes do not have the same stripping qualities as shampoo. Now, be careful with co-washing to make sure you get a really good co-wash. I know in the past I've co-washed too much and then had just a lot of buildup on my hair. So I really needed to get in with a good clarifying shampoo to get rid of all of that. All right, moving along to one of my favorite steps in the wash day process, deep conditioning. I love me a good deep conditioner. Deep conditioners may go by a different name. I've seen deep conditioners labeled as deep conditioners, deep treatment, or a hair mask. All of that is the same thing. Deep conditioning is basically the process of intensifying the moisture in your hair. Labels on deep conditioners will give you their guided instructions. Typically, I leave my deep conditioner on for 20 to 30 minutes and I sit under a hooded dryer because the heat really intensifies that moisture factor. I also feel like everyone should be deep conditioning. That's just my thing. I used to get on my mom so much about deep conditioning her hair and now she does it on a regular basis and she sees the results. Okay, now leave-in conditioners. Now leave-in conditioners can come in many forms. You can have a spray leave-in conditioner, something that's more water-based, that could also be used as a refresher or a daily moisturizer. Then there are also hair milks. Hair milks are usually on the thinner side, but still creamy. So for this next one in my notes, I put cream styler slash leave-in conditioner. Because for some people, cream stylers like smoothies or butters are their styler. For me personally, I can use a cream styler as 
a leave-in underneath the gel because a cream styler is not going to do enough for me. It's not gonna give me enough hold and I will speak on hold in a moment. I've used cream stylers before as leave-in conditioners. For example, the Curl Enhance and Smoothie from Shea Moisture or the curling cream from Texture ID. Both of those work beautifully as leave-in conditioners under a gel. Since we were just talking about gels, there is a large variety of gels out there on the market. You have liquidy, thin gels, like even um, Suave has a gel serum. I know that Elastic QP has a liquid gel. I've used both of those before. Then there are also jellies, like As I Am has a curling jelly. There are so many names for gels. Pomade, glaze, custard. Those are all considered gels. They're all in the gel family. In that range of the thinner gels all the way up to like the thick, wet line, eco style type gels, you get a range in the hold that each particular gel would give you. And the hold, a uh, product gives your hair it pretty much means how well that product will hold on to your curl pattern the product emphasizes your curls or if you're doing a braid out or a twist out or a bantu knot hold on to the curl pattern that you put it in so holding on to that pattern and fighting off the frizz you need to know your hair and you need to know based on my curl pattern and the type of styles that I like to do in my hair, these are the types of holds that work best for me. There's a whole range of holds. What we typically see, light hold, medium hold, firm hold, max hold, and flexible hold. For me and my hair, a soft hold or a light hold really isn't gonna do much. So if I'm already going to manipulate my hair, if I'm already gonna be doing twists or braid out or bantu knots or rollers or anything like that where my curls are already going to be manipulated, I can use a softer light hold. Otherwise, my hair is just going to poof up and frizz out. My favorites, my firm hold and my max hold, yes. I love those where I get that tight, tight definition. Oftentimes though, with firm hold and max hold, you do get a gel cast. A gel cast or a crunch, that's just describing that feeling when you put a gel or a styler in your hair and then it dries hard. There's a hard cast, a hard shell essentially, holding your curls in place. You can always scrunch the crunch, which just means taking oil, in your hands and scrunching out that gel cast, that hard exterior. And in my experience, flexible holds basically mean it depends on how much you use. You can use a little bit of the product and maybe get a medium hold or maybe even get a light hold depending on the product. Or you can use more of it to build up to a firm hold. Okay, now let's talk about oils. Not all oils are created equal. Some oils are moisturizing, like coconut oil, for example. They penetrate deep into the hair shaft to moisturize your hair. Other oils, like castor oil, for example, are sealants. So they seal off the hair as sort of like a barrier. If you use a sealant oil, as a moisturizing oil, you might still wind up with dry hair. Let me explain. I come out of the shower, just washed my hair, so there's nothing in it. My hair is just wet. And then I put castor oil or another sealant oil on top of that. It's going to be sealing in dry hair. So that's how you can be putting oil on your hair and still end up with dry hair. Now, if you put in, say, coconut oil, a moisturizing oil and then put castor oil on top of that you're sealing in that moisture even if you put moisturizing products on top of a sealant oil it's not going to penetrate your hair shaft because you've already sealed it up so be aware of what oils you're choosing depending on what job you want them to do if you don't already use oils in your natural hair routine i suggest that you do because they can be used in various ways you can add oils to your deep conditioner for example to up the moisture benefits you could also do hot oil treatments where you opt for oil only oils can also be used in the styling process another way that you can use a sealant oil is in the lock method. Lock stands for leave-in oil cream. Or for me, when I do that method, I do log, 
which would be leave-in oil gel. Then there are also people who do L-O-C-O. -O. I had to spell it out to make sure I wasn't forgetting something. It's a loco, yeah. So that's leave-in oil cream oil. So with that method, you would do your leave-in, your moisturizing oil, cream styler, and then your sealant oil to seal everything in there. Another thing some people swear by is the curly girl method. The curly girl method is basically just a set of practices that some people choose to adhere to for taking care of their curly hair. I think it's worth checking out, but be mindful that these are just suggestions. You don't have to follow everything on the curly girl method. You don't have to follow everything that I'm saying. Do what works for you and your hair. There are so many different ways to style natural hair, which is just so amazing. I love it. One of my favorites has to be wash and go. Now, wash and go, the term is misleading. Just the words implies, oh, I just wash my hair and I go. Eh, uh -uh. there's <laughs> slightly more than just washing and going. Wash and go basically refers to someone wearing their natural curl pattern without extensive manipulation. I also typically wet plop my hair every time I do a wash and go. To wet plop your hair, you're basically, cause I sleep in my wet plop. So basically you're keeping your hair in that wet state till I'm ready to sit under the dryer to dry my hair. Because air drying, which is just naturally letting your hair dry, takes me way, way too long. I used to air dry my hair, and then I started diffusing my hair, which is using a hand hair dryer with a diffuser attachment to disperse the heat that you're putting on your hair. So it's not as harsh as direct heat. Let's talk about protective styles. So protective styles can be so many different things. I mean, this is a protective style. Braids, buns, weaves, wigs, pretty much any style that leaves your hair in a way where you don't have to mess with it. Slip. You typically hear the term slip used when you're talking about detanglers or leave-in conditioners or rinse out conditioners. And slip basically means the ease in which your hair or a tool like a detangling brush or a wide tooth comb can move through your hair. If a product has a lot of slip, then it just makes it easier for you to detangle your hair. Big chop. A big chop could be where you are just straight up cutting it all off and going like low, low. Or it could just mean that you're cutting off a large amount of your hair. But so some people, they opt for doing a big chop or other people like myself transition their hair. By transitioning, I basically grew out my natural hair and little by little cut off the relaxed ends until it got to a point where I don't have any more relaxed ends, it's all gone. You may or may not have noticed, but I have not mentioned anything about hair typing. Quite frankly, I don't like the idea of hair typing. I think it is whack, I'm not a fan. People have asked me what hair types I have. I have about two to three hair types in my hair, which most people do. Most people have multiple hair types in their head. And contrary to what some people believe, no one hair type is better than any other. It's all beautiful. It's all our natural hair is beautiful. And all hair types can grow long, healthy, beautiful hair. But I'm also not a big fan of hair typing or leaning on hair typing because you can have two people with very similar hair types and they still get different results from any particular product. I tend to pay more attention to hair porosity Porosity is usually discussed in high, medium, and low porosity. And again, similar to hair types, there isn't a best type of porosity. It's not good or bad to have either type of porosity, it's just the type that you have. So you just need to figure out the type that you have and learn what products works best with that type of hair porosity. All right, so that's it. That's all I have on my notes. I really hope that this video wasn't too long. If there's anything that I didn't mention, but you've heard me mention a term or you've even heard it mentioned elsewhere and you're confused on what it is, let me know down below in the comments. I have no problem answering any questions. I'm not the type of person who thinks that, okay, well, how do you not know? Some people don't. 
I know for me, I used to get relaxers. So I had to learn all of this about taking care of my natural hair. I'm not certified in cosmetology. I took one cosmetology class years ago over the summer. I am simply taking y'all along on my natural hair journey and just sharing the knowledge that I've acquired. This is the moment in the video where I like to point your attention to some of my other content, like my very first natural hair 101 video, how I slick back my natural hair, and my natural hair journey tag video. I love you for watching. Y'all please be safe out there and I'll see you in the next one.